What's up everybody, China Cycling here with a quick look at this, the Chinese Elves Vanyar frame set. Now you'll be forgiven for having never heard of this frame set, as Elves are a fairly new company and also only really dealing with the domestic Chinese market right now. So this is the Elves Vanyar, the first fully monocoque one piece Chinese frame set. First, however, I think we need to backtrack a bit and talk about what do I even mean when I talk about a Chinese frame set. As most of you probably know, a lot of, if not most, carbon frame sets are made in China these days. I feel like in the cycling world there are three levels of perceived quality from most consumers. The highest level of quality being, you know, made in the USA or made in Italy or made in Europe or wherever. Most people seem to think this implies greater quality, and it certainly comes with a greater price tag. The second kind of tier of quality that we see on bikes is the made in Taiwan level. I have 0% interest in getting into a political conversation about whether or not Taiwan is or isn't part of China, but Taiwan is officially known as the ROC, and the C stands for China. But regardless, there's an acceptance that made in Taiwan is better quality than the, the lowest level, which is made in China. Uh, I'm going off on a tangent here, but you know most of Canyon's bikes, for example, are made in mainland China in Dongguan. But the brand is always keen to push its image as a German company, which they're fully entitled to do. They're, they are German and their bikes are designed in Germany. And you know, for me, a great analogy is smartphones. So made in China has always had negative connotations. But when people started to realize the best phones on the market, the iPhones and whatnots were all being assembled in China, people assumed it was okay to be made in China as long as it was designed in the West. However, a few years down the road, and now you have smartphone manufacturers like Huawei and Xiaomi, who design and manufacture their hugely successful products in mainland China. I think a lot of it is because of the almost elitist environment that surrounds cycling, but made in China really shouldn't be a bad thing. So, back to frame sets. When I say Chinese frame set, I'm talking about a frame that's both designed and manufactured in mainland China. These companies face a huge uphill battle in trying to earn respect, both internationally and domestically. Most Chinese riders also share the opinion that foreign bikes are superior, so let's see what elves are trying to do to convince us otherwise. Oh, and by the way, I brought this frame with my own money, so my opinions are my opinions and not influenced at all by anyone else. As with most of the Chinese products I review, I do end up talking to people in the company while I'm researching, and so gain a lot of knowledge from them, but I make sure I keep my opinions unbiased. The frame is a single mold design. When I was talking to some of the people in Elves, they were very proud of the fact they were the first Chinese frame to do that. And uh, what's the main advantage of a monocoque single mold design? Well. In theory, it means you can make a lighter bike for the same strength when compared with a more traditional frame, where in the more traditional frame, the front triangle and the rear triangles have been bonded together after coming out of separate molds. Uh, Elves have a couple of frame sets in the lineup now. The uh, Elgarth is the kind of mid price point bike which comes with some really cool paint jobs. That one retails for about 4,980 RMB, which is about 750 US dollars. The Falath is their aero bike. That one, the frame set, retails for 5,280 RMB, which is about 800 dollars. The Twendi is their budget frame set, which it looks a lot like the Vanyar, but retails for 3,999 RMB which is about 600 US dollars. And this, the Vanyar, is their premium lightweight frame that retails for 5999 RMB, or about 900 US dollars. 
How lightweight is lightweight? Well, the lightest vanyard they've made uh, came onto the scales at 699 grams. The, the guys in the elves were very honest and straight up, and they told me you know, that was a 44 centimeter frame and didn't include the derailleur hangers or the seat clamps. They told me a weight of about 760 to 780 grams was more reasonable for the size 46 I was ordering. Uh, speaking of sizes, always check out a geometry table when you're buying a new frame set. 46 centimeters may sound tiny, but the reach of this frame set was only 5 millimeters shorter than my 52 centimeter specialized LA Sprint. And the stack was around uh, 12 millimeters or so lower because the Vanyar has a super small head tube. So as a guy who usually rides a 49 to 52 centimeter frame, 46 centimeters sounded tiny. But after looking at geometry charts, it was definitely the one for me. And so my frame came in at 798 grams. And that was with the frame, uh, the internal seat post clamp, which weighs around 50 grams, uh, the rear derailleur hanger, and all of the bottle cage bolts. So if you just strip all, all those things away, then yes, around, well, less than 750 grams for just the carbon frame. And that's light. Uh, it's not world-beating light. For example, uh, a specialized S-Works Tarmac Ultralight weighs 733 grams in a much bigger 56 centimeter size. But that frame set also retails for $4,750, over five times the price of the Vanyar. Looking over the frame, it's hard to see anything amiss. Uh, I've built plenty of bikes using carbon frames, and uh, looking down the tube with a flashlight will often show you some dodgily trimmed ends, newspaper still wrapped around the steerer tube, uh, huge pieces of bladder still inside the frame and stuff, but none of that's present here. You know, I'll never claim to be some sort of carbon guru, but uh, it holds up to a close inspection. Overall and subjectively, I'd say the bike is a beautiful design. Uh, dropped seat stays are almost a must in 2018. It certainly makes the bike appear aero. And uh, while I don't think elves have ever put it in a wind tunnel, all of the edges look clean and flowing. The hidden integrated seat post clamp is something you'll see on many modern bikes to save some aero savings. And uh, one feature I particularly like is the use of a standard 27.2mm round seat post. It probably adds a few watts of wind resistance when you compare it to a more aero uh, oval or teardrop seat post, but it opens up your build to using a whole range of weight weenie seat posts that use the standard 272 millimeter setup. So perfect for my weight weenie build. Speaking of weight weenie features, the frame uses full carbon dropouts to save some more grams. While probably not something you'd want on a bike that's getting raced or hammered or thrashed every day or thrown in and out of a team car, uh, elves have no problem putting a five year warranty on the frame. Mentioning the word warranty inevitably makes people think of safety and testing. Uh, worryingly, it's not something on the top of most Chinese consumers' lists of priorities. Uh, I asked the folks at Elves about testing. They told me it was tested at, to ISO standards, as well as some of their own tests that surpassed ISO standards. They sent me these few videos and uh, even showed me some of their test certificates, but they asked me kindly not to share the test certificates with you guys uh, in fear that some cowboys would steal the certificates and make fake certificates to put on fake frames. So, hey, another added bonus of doing business in China, I guess. But uh, I think carbon is an inherently dangerous material just for the fact that you can't see what's going on below the surface. There are nightmare stories about carbon failures from not only Chinese frames, but for big main brand frames too. Uh, for the big brand names, their biggest fear is that their brand name will be damaged. But for counterfeit frames, they don't care. It doesn't damage their name, it damages the name of the brand that they're counterfeiting. And for generic or unbranded or open mold frames, 
again, there's no branding on the bike, so no brand to be damaged. So, you know, they have almost no recourse for having subpar quality. But elves are trying to build a reputation for themselves. Thus, they take their branding and quality control seriously, which personally installs a large amount of faith in the frame for me. Elsewhere on the frame, we can see it has internal cable routing uh, from the head tube to the rear brake and both derailers. There's full support for DI2 with a mountain bracket on the bottom and uh, holes for routing electronic cables. The bottom bracket is a PF86 standard, not my personal favorite. It seems to be one of those standards that pure frame designers love because it's big and fat, which means they can make it light and strong. But then bike builders don't really like it because it's press fit, which can be potential nightmares. And the added width means you can't use lightweight BB30 cranks. You need something with longer spindles. So this BB86 is compatible with standard Shimano cranks and SRAM GXP cranks, or with 30 millimeter fatter spindle cranks from the likes of Campagnolo or Rhoda that come with longer spindles, but it's not going to work with a BB30 crank from the likes of SRAM because it will just be too short. Also bundled with the frame set came a standard generic headset and also an adapter ring to allow the use of a brazon front derailleur, uh, but my build is going to be one by, so I can save a few grams by not putting that on the frame. I paid an additional 200 RMB for the Elves BB86 bottom bracket. It's 200 RMB or 30 US dollars for a ceramic bottom bracket. So great value for money. I also like its design because it's press fit, but the two halves are threaded together in the middle. This means as long as you have two BB wrenches, you can just kind of screw the two halves together and don't need to use a bottom bracket bearing press. And so I was able to install this bottom bracket at home myself with no problems. And I've ridden the bike since and there's zero creaking from the bottom bracket. So that's a look at the frame. I have a multi-part series coming up with this frame. My goal is to build a sub 5 kilo climbing bike for attacking Strava KOMs. But this being China Cycling, I'm going to be trying to do it on a budget. I've set myself a budget of around 1500 US dollars, which will probably mean using as many Chinese parts as possible. Uh, in the first part, I'm going to be going over all of the components for the build, breaking down their prices and their weights. In part two, I'm going to be putting the bike together. And in part three, I'm going to throw the finished bike at some climbs and see what it can do, or see what it can't do. But any failures will probably be more down to my lack of training recently rather than the bike. Anyway, subscribe so you don't miss those videos. I have most of the footage done for those videos, so they should be coming out soon. Just need to do the edit. Uh, any questions about this frame set, let me know. If you do end up ordering one, uh, tell the guys at Elves that you saw their frame on YouTube on China Cycling, and they uh, should take good care of you. That's all from China Cycling, ride safe.